My brothers, are you ready to go to work? Yes, most definitely, sir. Always okay, ready. Always ready. Always ready. That's that's the word. I, I like that 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 um, response. So, my brothers, go ahead and introduce yourselves. I'm Officer Simakaya, Israel United in Christ. I'm Mr. Bezalel, Israel United in Christ. And my name is Officer Gary with Israel United in Christ, Chicago. Okay, and we're so glad that you came down and was able to be with us on today. Um, how are you doing this morning? Fine, fine. Doing really pretty good. Excellent. Okay, um, let's let's go ahead and share um, what's on your heart. Let's go ahead and get into some of the things that um, we've had th four, three, four shows already on on certain things, and we've talked about different things, um, but. The key things that we shared and talked about was on the authentic, authentic, is the Bible authentic? Is the Word of God authentic? Is it just a, a, a fiction book, uh, a book that you can go to the library and find on the shelf? Is it, is it sacred? Is it, uh, is it just words written on paper that someone, um, the author, was just had nothing else to do and just wanted to throw it? Um, some things on the paper is not the original message, is not the original word, is not the word of God, is not even to be associated with God. These are statements that have been made, so this is nothing that I'm just making up, but these are, these are not even suggestions. These are comments that have been made, and there's people who raise some people's eyebrows. But I want you to share on, is the word of God authentic? So I start with one scripture as we've shared before. Go to Isaiah 34 and 16. Uh, we, we, we talked about this. We went through it the last time we were here on the authentic, authenticity of the Bible. Mm -hmm. You know something is authentic because the Bible, as we stated before, is, it has prophecies in it that spoke about things that would happen to the Israelites in the last days, in the days to come. And we proved that going through Deuteronomy 28, that how we went into slavery on ships, how our sons and daughters was taken from us during slavery and sold to other nations. And that's how you prove the authenticity of the Bible, as it states here, read that. The book of Isaiah, chapter 34, and verse 16. Seek ye out of the book of the Lord and read. So it says, seek ye out of the book of the Lord and read. Mm -hmm. So, seek ye out of the book of the Lord. How would you know what is the book of the Lord? Because... We know that the Lord is the ancient of days. He's always been here. He created everything. So if he's the ancient of days and he created everything, he's going to be able to tell you what's, what happened in the past, what happened in the Middle Ages, and what's happening now. Read. No one of these shall fail. It no. says no one of these shall fail, meaning the things that are written in the Bible, they're not going to fail. The things that were written, the things that were said is going to happen, they're going to come to pass. That's how you know that it's the book of the Lord. Read. None shall want her mate. It says none shall want her mate. You can't mate any religious book with the Bible. There's nothing, no, no other, you can't look in the Quran and see no prophecies about the things that's going on today, the things that's going on in the black, Hispanic, and Native American community. Mm -hmm. Like we brought out last time, the Bible speaks about us being shot by our oppressors, killed by our oppressors. Mm -hmm. Like we brought out is in Zechariah 11 and 5. We, we, we showed those things. Those are the things that prove that the Bible is authentic. So anybody can say, oh, that was written by man. It was tampered with. But if it was tampered with, why, is, why does it describe us, the blacks, Hispanic, and Native Americans, down to the T? What we went through in slavery. What we went through since we've been in America. The things that was happening today. The constant shootings. Our neighborhoods being cursed our children being taken from us, our land being taken from us. How that's, there's no other, that's, that's, that proves right there in itself that the Bible is authentic. If I may, add. if I may, give me Romans chapter three, I want verse three. Because what the officer just brought out, he brought out in the book of Isaiah 34 and 16, what, what the book of the Lord is. The book of the Lord is talking about the records, the Bible. Give me verse 3. Watch this. The book of Romans, chapter 3 and verse 3. Mm -hmm. For what if some did not believe? What if some didn't believe what just came out? What if some didn't believe this Bible, like the, the other brothers are talking about? What if they didn't believe the prophecies that's taking place right before their eyes, that's actually documented in this Bible? Watch this. 
Shall their unbelief make the faith of God? Just because they don't believe, shall that make the faith of God what? Without effect? Without effect. So does that mean because they don't believe what's written in there, that the stuff that's written here won't happen? Watch this. God forbid. No, it's going to happen. Actually, it's happening right before your eyes. Read. Yay. Let God be true. Let who be true? Let God be true. The word God is found in the, book, the Bible. So it says, let God be true. Read. But every man a liar. Every man a liar. Any brother that come against the Bible is a liar. Watch this. Give me Matthew 24. Here's a prophecy real quick. What, look around today. What are we going through? Why does everybody got mask on their face? What is that about? The Bible prophesied what was coming. Mm. Watch this. The book of Matthew, chapter 24, and verse 6. Uh -huh. And ye shall hear of wars. You're going to hear about these wars that's coming to, come to take place. Read. And rumors of wars. And rumors of wars that's been sparked up. Read. See that ye be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass. Christ was warning us. He said, listen, don't be, don't be afraid. Mm -hmm. Don't be troubled, because this must happen. Read. But the end is not yet. He said, the end ain't yet. It ain't here yet. Read. For nations shall rise against nations. He's giving you more prophecies. What's going to happen is the nations are going to start fighting against each other. Why do you think every nation's holding on missiles? Read. Mm. And kingdom against kingdom. Kingdom against kingdom. America against Britain. Rome against another, another country. Read. And there shall be famines. There's going to be famines. Shortage of food. It's going to be a point where the grocery store line is going to be around the block. And there ain't going to be enough food for everybody. Read. Mm. And pestilences. And what? Pestilences. If you look in your dictionary, look up pestilence. That's going into plagues or diseases, right? What disease is plaguing the earth right now? COVID-19. Okay? The Bible is not a fairy tale book. It's high time that our people wake up, open your eyes. Mm. All right? I'm going to leave it at that. Hey, and, just, and just to add, because in, in Romans 3, what we left out was, as it is written. As it is written. A man cannot write something 2,000 years ago, 3,000 years ago, four, five, 6,000 years ago with pin, such pinpoint accuracy and it's affecting our lives today in 2020. It's mm -hmm. impossible. So, so, so the, is the Bible authenticated? Just look around. Mm -hmm. It should be, what did it say? Nation, you, hear, you shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. What just happened this past weekend? Mm -hmm. This past week? One of the top prominent scientists in Iran got knocked off by Israel, allegedly, mm -hmm. by the country Israel, which Israel is basically little America over there, right? The country, mm -hmm. they give Israel $13 million every single day in military aid. So really, who's behind that? Mm -hmm. America. You understand? So what do you think Iran is going to do? That's outside of what they did early January against Iran. So Iran, what are they, what are they doing? They're trying to muster up the battle, battle to retaliate for what's been done by Israel and America. Yes. That's country against country. And like he brought out about the pestilence, COVID-19. You understand? Uh, limited to the amount of foods at the grocery stores. Mm. So show me all these things in the Quran. Show me all these things in the Egyptian Book of the Dead. In uh, T.D. Jakes, Thou Art Loose. Or in, uh, in, a, in a Talmud. Mm -hmm. so, yo, so we have to stop playing with this book. This book is a living book. Yes. Yes, I totally agree with that. That was brought up and it was shared on last Sunday, last week, by um, the guest that we had on last week. Um, people want to know about Israel United in Christ. Tell us about your organization and how it started, where it started, all of that. Give us the inf information behind that. Okay, um, real quick, I, I want you to know that um, Israel United in Christ is, is one of many churches in these last days that, that is being resurrected. Give me uh, revelations, what I asked you for, please, earlier. You gotta understand that this is prophecy. This is not like a, a man-made church that just rose up out of nowhere and just speaking a whole bunch of nonsense. Mm -hmm. in, the, in these last days, God prophesied that he would put his spirit upon his people, which started in, in the 1960s. You remember the turbulent 60s? Mm -hmm. That's when God began to put his spirit back on his people. That's why you had great leaders like Malcolm X, Fred Hampton, the Panthers, a lot of the great movements that we have today mm -hmm. started from the 60s mm -hmm. when God put a spirit on his people. So we're going to show you, read that. We're going to show you that. The book of Revelations, chapter 11 and verse 11. Mm -hmm. And after three days and a half, the spirit of life from God entered into them. So that's a parable. It don't mean all oh, this didn't happen in no three days, right? It's talking about 350 years, mm -hmm. three days and a half. Okay. So from the time of 1619, when we uh, 
got here to the shores of America as, as slaves, as cargoes, on the cargo slave ships, to 350 years later, right around the 1960s. God said he's going to do what? The spirit of life from God entered into them. You see, that? that's why everybody can acknowledge that the 1960s, that decade right there, of course, it was a little bit, some, some uh, turbulence before that and some after that. But that decade right there, our people rose up. The spirit of God was in us to fight for uh, rights, to fight for benefits, fight for justice. And also to fight for God's laws and bring these laws out. The Israelites started pre uh, street preaching mm. and teaching the blacks, Hispanics, Native American Indians are not black or Hispanic, that we are indeed the lost tribes of the children of Israel. And we must come back and keep God's laws because time is short. Read on. And they stood upon their feet. And they stood upon their feet. Remember, as a people, as a whole, we had all type of groups that formed during the 1960s from <laughs> Stokely Carmichael to Fred Hampton. The Panthers, uh, Elvis Cleaver, Malcolm, uh, Malcolm X, can't forget about him. Uh, Martin Luther King, a lot of different brothers rose up during that time, and sisters. And of the other tribes, the Hispanics and um, na so-called natives, they rose up with us. Because God put his spirit in us, real. And great fear fell upon them which saw them. You see that? And great fear fell upon our enemies which saw them. So there was a man in the 1960s uh, named Abba Bivens. Abba Bivens was the founder of one of the original um, Israelite schools. He had students under him, and under those students became came our elder, Bishop Nathaniel. Bishop Nathaniel learned from the elders that came in the 1960s. And what Bishop Nathaniel did was, after that old school had um, you know dissipated, brothers got old, older, they passed away, he formed Israel United in Christ in 2003. The reason why he formed Israel United in Christ in 2003 was because there had to be, you know, here in America, you, you, you can't um, come as a, as a group without forming like an entity. You need, you need a church name to, to move, navigate, and things like that. So in 2003, Israel United in Christ was created, and we stand on teaching God's laws and the faith of Christ. That's right. All right? But our school is located on the west side of Chicago. All right? So Bishop Nathaniel started Israel United in Christ in New York in 2003. From there, it spread to Chicago, it spread to uh, West Africa, it spread all throughout the world. But our charter, our chapter, is on 4339 West Division Street. That's the west side of, of Chicago. Mm -hmm. All right, if anybody wants to contact uh, Officer Simakai, Officer Bezalil, Officer Gabriel, myself, you can call, call the school at 855-484-4842, extension 712. I'm going to say it again, 855-484-4842. Extension 712 to reach the Chicago branch, the Chicago chapter. Because we are the closest school to you uh, brothers out here in um, Champaign. Mm -hmm. You know, we in Cook County, we're two hours away. All right? So Israel United in Christ is a church that has been established to teach God's laws to the 12 tribes of Israel. So we all can repent, hopefully. Mm -hmm. And America, war yes. is coming, baby. Yes. And we getting up out of here, Lord's willing. That's right. yeah. Those that obey the one true God. <laughs> and that's been one of the key words you just said, is that we've been trying to focus in on to share this is what is problematic in this country. All, actually, all around the world is the word repent. Mm -hmm. People want to revive, open up everything. They want to revive everything. They want to get back to usual, what used to be. But they, when it comes to that word repent and obey God's commandments, that's like, oh, no. We ain't going to have, we can't do that. But when it comes to opening up everything, when it comes to um, looking at the numbers, looking at um, what we have, knowing that we want to get back to um, prosperity, we're going to tackle that. We want to look at the material things. We want to get at, get back to, um, you know, the powers, superpowers. Our country is better than the other country. Mm -hmm. Look what we have. Look what we've done. When we look at our administration, our government, Looking at, oh, everything's fine. Everything's going to be fine. Um, we just, you know, look at the stock market and all of that. But if you mention the word repent, people cringe. Now, look, look, let me uh, ask one question. What's wrong with thou shalt not steal? Because mm. right now, you, you know, you, you, you have been a brother to us. You uh, invited us to your studio. What's wrong with us not stealing something from, from you? What's wrong with uh, a brother not killing another brother? If, if I see you with self-worth, 
and, and and you are made in the image of God. Thou shalt not kill. Why why should I cringe on keeping that law? If you have a wife, why should I cringe? Because I'm not allowed to talk to your wife. Mm. She belongs to you. Yeah. Likewise, I have my wife. If why should you cringe at not talking to my wife? So us as a people, we have to stop playing games. We have to stop cringing at God's laws because God is fed up. That's why he sends off these plays COVID-19. Yes. I'm telling y'all people who's listening to this, time is very short. We got to stop playing with the Heavenly Father. We must keep God's commandments. It's not, a, it's not like uh, he's asking us. He's telling us war is coming to America. This is coming to an end. Before I allow it to come to an end, my people must wake up <clears throat> to the fact that they are not black Hispanics, that they are the Israelites, and they must keep God's law. Stop cringing. Mm. <laughs> Um, our country, other countries have a problem with that word repent. They want to revive everything. They want to open up everything. They want to try to restore what used to be and get go back to what used to be so it can be. But when it comes to the word repent, they don't want to repent because they have a problem with repenting. And I was just saying, hear your brother's sentiments on that. Uh, the, the, the One of the major problems with our people is that the major problem with our people is that they, for one, they they despise God's laws. They despise the Bible. I don't I don't care how many times you got, how many Bibles you got on the bookshelf, how many Bibles you got on your dashboard, how many crosses you got hanging from your um, your, your rear, rear view mirror. That don't mean nothing if you're not gonna keep the commandments. If you're not gonna do what the Bible say. And repentance goes into repentance is you having you changing, you having to change your heart because you feel remorseful. And guilty because you find out, okay, dang, I've been doing, I've been in error. I've been doing what God told me not to do. And repentance is, okay, you know what? I've been doing wrong. Let me turn back to, let me go and read my Bible, see what it says I'm supposed to do, and let me do it. But the problem is, our, proof, our people are comfortable in lies. Mm. Our people are comfortable following after the ways of the oppressor. We are we rebellious children. Read that. The book of Isaiah, chapter 30 and verse 8. Now go. Write it before them in I'll a table. Start at verse 1. Verse 1. Woe to the rebellious children, said the Lord, that take counsel but not of me. So that's that's one of the major problems in the black, Hispanic, and Native American community. It says, woe to the rebellious children. Woe means destruction. Woe to the rebellious children that take counsel but not of me. We all, we all want to hear things that tickle our ears, that make us feel good. We don't want to hear something that make us feel uncomfortable. Because what, hap what happens if somebody if you got a thief and, and somebody tell them, hey, man, you need to stop stealing. You a thief. That ain't how you get make a living. They get mad because, hey, you you judging me. That's that's one of the major. Only God can judge me. And people don't even that statement in itself. Do you re do you really know what you're saying when you say only God can judge me? Because mm -hmm. if you're saying only God can judge me, that means that in your wickedness, if God judge you, you're getting death, and not just physical death of your physical body dying. He's going to destroy your soul. Amen. Well, it, it ain't no coming back from that. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's better to take it from us. We're telling you, hey, the Bible says don't, <coughs> don't steal. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not commit adultery. You should not, form, you should not do these things. Take it from us because we're giving you a warning so you can correct it and get it right. But our people don't want to hear it. Uh, read, read on. And they cover what they're covering, but not of my spirit. That they may add sin to sin. A lot of our people flock to, Christi flock to Christianity because what does Christianity teach and say? Oh, God loves you no matter what you do. I've, I've come out of the Christian church. I heard a pastor say, God is not mad at you. He's mad about you. Mm. Mm. What? <laughs> you, you, you willingly not doing what he say to do. Even things as simple as growing a beard. Yeah. The law says that a man is supposed to have a beard. But you tell a man that, oh man, I can't, I can't grow a beard, you know, I get bumps. Do you, you know the reason why, you, the reason you get hair bumps is because you ain't got you cutting your beard off. Mm -hmm. That's not natural. Mm -hmm. That's, that's learning, that's following after the ways of the other nations. Mm -hmm. We are rebellious children. We, it says, they cover with a covering, but not of my spirit. They do what the pastor, whatever the pastor say do, they do. That's covering with a covering. Mm -hmm. If they, whether you in Christianity, you have a, a, a Muslim pastor, whatever, whatever, whatever they say, do, and that's that's evidently shown because you can have somebody from that's that say they Muslim Islam. You ask them about the Quran, but they don't read out of the Quran. 
they say the thoughts of their mind. They say what they think and what they feel is good. Now people, oh, yeah. good sermon, good thing. Mm -hmm. But then when you bring the Bible out, now I don't want to hear that. Mm -hmm. Our people are rebellious. Get the, get, mm -hmm. the, get that in Amos. The book of Amos, chapter 5 and verse 10. They hate him that rebuke in the gate, and they abhor him that speaketh uprightly. <laughs> so we, those that speak uprightly are those that are teaching God's laws. Our people hate that. They hate anytime you anytime you bring if our people are in error, you tell them what they're doing in error to help them get better. And it's like you don't know what you're talking about. You can't tell me what to do. Only God can judge me. But mm. in essence, the most high put the spirit in the prophets to be able to help and instruct our people to get their mind right. Exactly. Amen. Yeah. That's that's what repentance is. And our people our people do not want to hear. They're comfortable in lies. They're comfortable with oppression. Get uh, Isaiah 29, mm. 2015. The book of Isaiah, chapter 28, verse 15. Because ye have said, we have made a covenant with death, and with hell are we at agreement. So it says, they, we have made a covenant with death, and with hell we are at agreement. What that mean? What is that talking about? If How do you make a covenant with death? Because most look at death as you, your body physically, your body physically dead, you in the, you in the grave. It says, we have made a covenant with death and with hell are we at agreement. Hold this, kid. Isaiah 5 and 13. Real quick. The book of Isaiah, chapter 5 and verse 13. Therefore, my people are gone into captivity because they have no knowledge and their honorable men are famished. So it says, my people are going into captivity because they have no knowledge. Mm -hmm. Knowledge that this is talking about is God's laws. When you look at Malachi 2 and 7. They're going into captivity because they have no knowledge, meaning they're not keeping the commandments. Read. And their honorable men are famished. The honorable men are famished, meaning the leader of the people have no knowledge. They have no understanding. They're famished. They, they have nothing to give the people because they 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 fruitless. They're following after their oppressors. Right. Mm -hmm. Read. Mm -hmm. And their multitude dry up with thirst. Uh -huh. Therefore, hell hath enlarged herself. Now it says, therefore, hell hath enlarged herself. What is hell? Read the first part of verse thirteen. Therefore, my people are gone into captivity. Hell is captivity, which is what we are—the state where we are in right now. We're in captivity because we broke God's commandments. We broke God's commandments, so now, therefore, we are in hell. Now, go back to uh, Isaiah twenty-eight, the book of Isaiah, chapter twenty-eight, and verse fifteen. Because ye have said, we have made a covenant with death. And with hell are we at agreement? When uh, the, the leaders of our people have made uh, um, amities and, and agreements with yes. the with the politicians and mm -hmm. all of those things. They made agreements with that, and they made agreements with all of that. That's the, that's the your leaders of Christianity. A lot of the Christian leaders are connected with the politics and all of that. Mm -hmm. And they're only doing what they told to do. They're not doing what the Bible says to do. They're not teaching. They have the Bible, but they're not teaching what the Bible says to do. Uh, read on. When the overflowing scourge shall pass through, it shall not come unto us. Now go over to 30 and 12. The book of Isaiah, chapter 30 and verse 12. Wherefore, thus saith the Holy One of Israel, because ye despise this word. Our people despise God's. They despise this Bible. They despise the King James Bible <clears throat> by their actions. Like I said, it don't matter if you have a Bible on your bookshelf open to Psalms 23. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Talking about the Lord is my shepherd. <laughs> no. That's another thing. That's another thing that's another scripture that's taken way out of context of what our people, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. They got the Bible open to that on their bookshelf, and they think by doing that, that the Most High is with them. No. Mm -hmm. And then cringe at his commandments. Right, and cringe mm -hmm. at his commandments. Mm -hmm. They say, I love the Lord, I love the Lord. Mm -hmm. I do whatever he say do. Mm -hmm. Grow your beard. I can't grow my beard. They stop committing adultery. Stop committing adultery, why? That's why he made women, women beautiful. Mm -hmm. Crazy. Cringe at God's law, it says, read it again. Wherefore, thus saith the Holy One of Israel, because ye despise this word, and trust in oppression and perverseness, mm. and stay thereon. That's the problem. They trust in oppression. Oppression is what? Christianity, mm -hmm. Islam, mm -hmm. 
That's those are the religions of our oppressors. Mm -hmm. Those are the, the, the Christianity and Islam are the, the religions of our oppressors, because under the Arabians we were un, we was enslaved under them. That's how we learned Islam. Christianity is obvious. We're here in America, but that's how we learn Christianity. Mm -hmm. We trust in oppression and perverseness, and when as we bring bring as we go out and we teach and we bring out the truth and show, hey, this is your book. This is who you are. You're supposed to be keeping God's laws. I, people, I don't want to hear that. That ain't true. That's man's word. That's your interpretation. No, the Bible says plain as day. It's just if you have an ear to hear, if you're willing to learn, you actually hear it and be like, wow, that's I didn't know that the Bible. Was. When I, I know for me, when I first heard it, when I seen Deuteronomy 28, when I seen the various mm -hmm. things, I was like, I didn't know that was in there. And I was in the, I was in Christianity for seven years. Going to church every Sunday, every Wednesday, every function they had, I was there. But yet, when I now, I know I knew more in the first six months than I did in seven years going to the Christian church. Mm -hmm. Because Christ, the Christianity cherry-picks scriptures and just, it, it's like a, uh, it's just slavery, it's, it's slavery. They just mm -hmm. tell you what they want, tell you, tell you what you want to hear make you feel good. Mm -hmm. Facts. That's all. If I may. One of the reasons our people have a problem with repent repentance, which means stop sinning, because they fail to realize that they, the so-called blacks, Hispanics, Native Indians, were given the laws of God. Let's prove that real quick. Psalms 147, verse 19. They, they don't know that. They, they haven't been taught that the Bible was actually given to them, the Israelites. Again, the so-called blacks, Hispanics, Native Indians. Watch this. Mm. The book of Psalms, chapter 147, verse 19. He showeth his word unto Jacob. To who? Jacob. You got to know your history. Jacob is the forefather of the Israelites, the so-called blacks, Hispanic Native Indians. Right. All right, read. His statutes and his judgments unto Israel. To Israel, the Israelites, the so-called blacks, Hispanics, Native Indians. Read. He had not dealt so. With any nation. He ain't dealing with the other nations. So all the other doctrines that our brothers like to follow behind, Islam, Christianity, he not dealing with those. Right. Read. And as for his judgments, uh -huh. they have not known them. Right. The judgments is on us because we breaking the laws. They not getting shot down in the street, the mother nations. You see us getting shot down the street. You see us living in the ghettos. You see what I'm saying? Because the Bible was given to us. And number two, it's an identity crisis. Mm -hmm. Our people have a problem with repentance. Because they don't realize who they are. All right? You, you turn on the TV, you see movies like, um, movies based on Moses, or what's they called? What's the name, son? Uh, Ten, Commandments. Ten, Commandments. Ten Commandments. Ten Commandments. They portrayed the characters Christ. as being white. Yeah. So they can't identify with that. You go to the Christian church, you see an image of a white man hanging on the cross, mm -hmm. blue eyes and a blind eye. Yeah. So of course they have a, a problem with repentance. Give me Isaiah 1. Watch this. Yeah, they got a problem with repentance. Check this out. Mm. The book of Isaiah, chapter 1 and verse 3. Uh -huh. The ox knoweth his own. Now, the ox is an animal. Big, beasty animal. Somewhat to be dumb, right? Read. And the ass his master's crib. The ass is another word for donkey. All right? Jackass. He knows his, he knows his master actually lives. Read. But Israel. And it was a sin. If you take a donkey 10 miles outside of his master's house, mm -hmm. he will wander back home. That's right. Read. But Israel doth not know. We've been... Um, Lost for so many years, and we still don't know who we are. We haven't wandered back home yet. It says, who don't know? But Israel does not know. It's prophesied that our people don't know who they are. You can ask three black men right now, on the, on the line right now, I can ask them, what's your nationality? I'm going to get probably ten different answers from just three men. Amen. Watch this. Read on. My people uh -huh. does not consider. They don't even want to find out or do the research who they are. Yeah. Read. Ah. Sinful nation. What God call them? Sinful nation. Sinful nations. They don't, they don't. They don't understand that they was given a set of laws that we are breaking every day. So that causes us to be in sin. Repentance means to stop sinning. Stop read. A people laden with iniquity. They laden with sin, covered in sin. Read. A seed of evildoers. Even our children are sinning. Right. You know, you got. They, we just went past so-called Thanksgiving, right? They don't even know the origins of that thing. You celebrating the death of your forefathers and foremothers. Then what else you got coming up? Wicked holiday Christmas. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. The Bible talks about that that was a, a pagan holiday. We're not supposed to do that. But read on. Children that are corruptors. 
Uh -huh. They have forsaken the Lord. Children that are corruptors. You got this. We got it. We shooting each other down in the street, gang banging. You know what I mean? Prostituting our own sisters. Read. They have forsaken the Lord. Uh -huh. They have provoked the Holy One of Israel unto anger. Uh -huh. They are gone away backward. We walking backwards, bro. So that's why people have a problem with repentance. They don't know who they are. Identity crisis. And one, they don't understand that the Bible was given to them. And, and let me add this too. Understand that there's a reward for righteousness. You understand? God is not asking you to do his commandments for no reason. You understand? You honestly think that God is going to suffer the, uh, his people, the Israelites, blacks and Hispanics, running around killing each other in these low-income buildings and these bad situations in these cities? Uh, you think he's going to suffer another nation, keep gunning down his children week after week on camera in police brutality? You think he's going to suffer that? Mm -hmm. No, God is going to do away with this world, and there's going to be, he's going to usher in a whole new world. Give me that in Revelation 22 and uh, 12. Bring it out. The book of Revelation, chapter 22 and verse 12. Come on. And behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me. You see that? He said his reward is with him. Meaning the same way in the beginning how God made the Garden of Eden, the Kingdom of Eden, and it was peaceful, and it was flourishing. Mm -hmm. God, his plan is to do so again. The second time. But before he does that, he has to get rid of all this wickedness. The first time he did it with water, this time he's doing it with warfare. You understand? And a lot of you Israelites, a lot of you blacks and Hispanics, y'all are going to get caught up in that because y'all don't want, y'all cringe at the commandments of God. Mm -hmm. Read on, Judah. Mm -hmm. To give every man according as his work shall be. Hey, and, and also this, if you want to cringe at God's commandments, go ahead and be wicked. If you want to uh, be in, in idolatry, go ahead and continue on in idolatry. If you are a whoremonger right now, continue being a whoremonger. If you are a thief, continue being a thief. If you are a murderer, continue murdering. But I want you to understand this one thing. There's going to be a judgment for every single thing that you do in this life. Read that again for him, Judah. And behold, I come quickly. Uh-huh. No, that part about reward, uh, to give to every give. man. To give every man according to his work. Read that again, Judah. To give every man according as his work so, shall be. So if you want to carjack brothers at the stoplight, you want to rob ladies for their purses, you want to whoremonger, you want to create babies all throughout Urbana and Champagne and not take care of these babies, you got a baby on the west side, mm. baby on the south side, a baby in Champagne, you don't want to take care of these babies, read mm. that again, Judah. To wow. give every man according as his work shall be. Just like God can bless you, God can curse, destroy you, and, and kill you, mm. you know? I am Alpha and Omega. You see that? This is the chief talking. We we are his service. We just men. This is the chief talking. This is the alpha talking. Read on. Finish that up. The beginning and the end. Come on. The first and the last. Read. Blessed are they that do his commandments. No, cursed are they. Blessed yes. are they that do his commandments. It's just that simple. If you want to cringe at thou shalt not steal, you want to be a thief, do your thing. But us, we're going to receive God's blessing. That's why we're fighting to teach y'all so y'all can receive God's blessings. Mm, right. God's blessing is not just prosperity. It's prosperity. God can bless you. He will bless you with wisdom. Mm -hmm, right. He will bless you with the understanding of what's going on. He will, And I'm talking about the Most High will give you such understanding, it, it'll blow your mind. Amen. Go ahead. You want to say something? Go ahead, brother. Oh, about, first of all, the caller called in and he said, People are rebellious. They don't want change. Mm. They don't want change. Yeah. They're rebellious. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold, from Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how we're men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.